Hello there, thrill seekers. I usually refrain from responding to current events on this video channel. I kind of took a vow about three years ago not to do that, but I thought I would break my rule uh, today. It's not the first time I've broken the rule, but I uh, thought I'd break the rule today and talk about the recent events in Israel. And I assume everybody who's watching this video as I'm making it, the day I'm making it, uh, knows what I'm talking about. But if you're watching this in the far future, uh, this was recorded, this video was recorded about three days after the attack by Hamas on an open air music festival in Israel. And currently uh, the Israelis are uh, attacking regions in Gaza and so forth. I don't know all the details. I didn't watch uh, the news of this happening when it was breaking, but it was impossible to avoid, especially since the day after the events happened, I went to a wedding of a, a Jewish friend of mine and a lot of his family were there and uh, they were talking about it and so I was hearing a lot they weren't specifically talking to me about it but I was hearing a lot of conversations about the events I finally looked at an actual news story this morning a couple of them before making this video to kind of make sure I got it right or at least as close to right as possible these kind of events are are really tragic and tragically common among human beings and we'd all like to believe human beings are better than that and i think we usually are better than that but it happens and these these terrible tragic things happen some of the stuff i've been watching today has been i tend to go for these sort of alternative news sources and, and a lot of people want to point out that this attack didn't just come out of nowhere that there's a history behind it and so on and so forth uh, which is not in any way, at least from my point of view, a way to excuse what went on or to say it's all right or to say it doesn't matter or anything like that. It's just, it, I think it is useful to know uh, where this comes from. But ultimately, that isn't how you deal with it. Um, let me see if I can explain. Trying to figure out, if, if you look at the current situation between Israel and Hamas in, the, in the, uh, the Palestinian side there, and you try to figure out what's going on and who's right and who's wrong and who, who did what first and all that, it, to me, the only metaphor I can think of is it's, it's like trying, walking in on a soap opera uh, in season 38 you know, just a random episode in season 38 and trying to figure out what, who the hell did what. You're never going to figure it out. And I think that's part of the reason these things get so, so convoluted. Because honestly, even when I watch these so-called experts who are going to tell me, you know, the history of the thing and all that, I realize, oh, you don't really know that much about what's going on either. And, and nobody, probably even the people in the field doing their things, you know, doing these atrocities and whatever they're doing, they don't even know the history that well. It's just, it's just, it doesn't come from there. We, we pretend it comes from there. But I don't think it really, that's really where it comes from. I think that's, that's like something we make up after to to sort of justify the actions which is not to i'm not trying to say that this never happened or that israel never did bad things to the palestinians or anything like that so don't write me about that but I, I i think there's a deeper level at which there is just now and in the level where there is just now that's where i think we can do something about stuff like this which isn't to claim I have the answer. I'm not claiming I have the answer. And I'm sure I'm going to get all sorts of blowback from this video, but I'm just going to say what I want to say anyway. I think most of us just have no idea and have no connection with this sort of thing. Some people, I think, who watch this video may actually be in Israel. There might be a certain contingent of people in Israel watching this video. 
because I know my books sell over there. I went over there, and that's kind of one of the things I wanted to talk about. Um, it, I wrote about it in this book, There Is No God and He Is Always With You, about, I think it was the year 2010 or so. When did this book come out? This book came out in 2013, so it's probably 2011 maybe, or 2012. Uh, one of those years in around there, about 10 years-ish ago, I went to Israel. And I stayed for, I guess I was there about a week. And most of the time I was staying with a Palestinian guy in the Palestinian side of Jerusalem. But that's not who invited me there. Who invited me there was, it's probably in the book, I forgot to go look it up. But it was a university uh, located in Tel Aviv who invited me to go talk and that's who I ended up doing my sort of Zen stuff for. Uh, I wish I could have done something on the Palestinian side. That probably would have been more interesting, but I didn't get a, an invitation and I'm like a vampire. I can't go unless I'm invited, right? So uh, it was interesting to see that, especially given the fact that I'd spent the previous week, the previous week to going to Israel, I'd spent in Belfast, Northern Ireland. And so it's a it's a quite a similar situation there. These kind of generational conflicts that go back a very long time, and nobody really, even though even though they might claim to, nobody really knows where it started. And people are still angry about it, and it's going to keep going on. They seem to have settled things in Northern Ireland, and let's hope that settlement holds. It's been holding for quite a while, uh, but in Israel it hasn't, and now things have just gotten worse. There's two aspects of this that I think I can address. And the first uh, comes from Dogen, and I wrote about it considerably much, ooh, that's bad grammar, in this book, Don't Be a Jerk. Uh, Dogen has an essay in Shobogenzo, which can be found, just in case you're playing along, in book one of the Nishijima Cross version of Shobogenzo. Uh, so it's, it's an early piece by him. And it's chapter 10 in the Nishijima Cross version, which means it's probably uh, chapter 11 or 9 or 10, 10. On, sometimes the chapters are numbered differently in different editions, but you'll probably find it in, in most editions. Well, you would definitely find it in every complete edition of Shobo Genzo, and you'll probably find it in a lot of the compilations that have been done based on stuff from Shobo Genzo, because it's a really important chapter, and it's called Sho Aku Makusa. And as you can see, Nishijima and Cross translated it as not doing wrongs. And it's a kind of an interesting way they write it, if you're going to get a little kanji lesson, Chinese character. Because there are no plurals, true plurals in Japanese, you have to make a plural by kind of making it obvious. So it's, it says many evil, not make. <laughs> It's a bit, It's hard to translate. Do, not doing wrongs is, is a pretty good translation. But it's saying, it, it's talking about not creating wrong. That's So that, that would be my one quibble with this title that Nishijima and Cross gave it, would be I would maybe call it not creating wrong. If I was going to do a straight translation, I actually called it Don't Be a Jerk in my book, Don't Be a Jerk. And... I'll read you a little bit of how I put it. The Buddha said, Don't be a jerk, do the right thing, then the mind is not irked, and the enlightened ones sing. I just tried to make every poem rhyme. It was a little thing I did. It doesn't really rhyme in the original. We should consider this ancient teaching in practice. This is the real message that has been transmitted through the ages to this concrete time and place. It's what the 10,000 Buddhas have been practicing all along. Among rightness, wrongness, and it doesn't matterness, there is wrongness. Wrongness is what happens at the very moment you do something wrong. It's not an abstraction that sits around waiting to be done. It's the same with rightness and it doesn't matterness. There are similarities between real wrong actions, no matter where or when they occur. And there is a big difference between right, wrong, and it doesn't matter type actions. 
Right and wrong are time, but time is neither right nor wrong. Right and wrong are the dharma, but the dharma is neither right nor wrong. When you yourself are in balance, you know right from wrong absolutely. The state of enlightenment is immense and includes everything. We hear of this supreme state from our teachers and from what we read. Right from the start, it sounds like, don't be a jerk, shoakumakusa, that's what I'm translating. So it sounds like not creating evil. That would be a better translation. I'm just trying to be cute by saying don't be a jerk. If it doesn't sound like don't be a jerk, it's not Buddhist teaching. Don't be a jerk wasn't a teaching someone intentionally invented. It existed before anyone put it into words. When we hear it, we hope that we can learn to do the right thing and not be a jerk, not do wrong. This is a pretty big deal. It's on the scale of the whole of time and the entire universe. The scale of not being a jerk is in the not being part. Not creating is what I was trying to translate. Not, it's not evil, it's the, in the not creating evil. Just don't do jerk-like things. When jerk-type actions are not done by someone, jerk-type actions do not exist. When evil is not done by someone, evil does not exist. Even if you live in a place where you could act like a jerk, even if you face circumstances in which you could be a jerk, even if you hang out with nothing but a bunch of jerks, the power of not doing jerk-type things conquers all. Jerk-type action has no fixed form. It has no existence until someone does it. If we don't act like jerks, jerk-type acts cannot exist. And here's the bit of it I put on the back cover because I liked it. Even if the whole universe is nothing but a bunch of jerks doing all kinds of jerk type things, there is still liberation in simply not being a jerk. So the being a jerk is it was difficult. Uh, I, I came up with it. It, it, it was kind of difficult to come up with it. And I had a lot of kind of arguments about it. And especially when it was translated into foreign languages, I remember having a conversation with different translators, with the French translator, certainly, and maybe some of the other translators of it over, over how to translate this. And I don't know how they did it in their languages. But the idea is do not enact evil. Evil doesn't come into existence until someone does it. So it, it, it's not something that hangs around waiting to be done. And that tends to be the way we frame it for ourselves. And, and it seems, I was going to say, this tends to be the way the Western people frame it for ourselves because a lot of our Western religions have this, this idea of sort of evil that exists without anybody doing it and personified by Satan and things like that. But it's obvious from reading this that even Buddhism has this or pe people who are Buddhists uh, in Japan, certainly who Dogen was writing to, had this same idea. So he had to tell them, no, evil doesn't exist until someone does evil. And evil action is evil action no matter what the intention and no matter what the motivation. So no matter what historical circumstances or what kind of surroundings you have or what situation you're in, the doing of an evil action is still the doing of an evil action. And it has its own karma and everything else associated with it. Evil doesn't motivate you. Evil isn't out there motivating you. You are doing evil. And one thing that Nishijima Roshi liked to say is that we all know when we are acting, he would say, against the rule of the universe. We could say, we could call this evil. Whenever we do evil, we know it. So the excuse that you, there's this or that happening and you have this history or whatever it is, that compels you to do the evil action, that's all a bunch of bullcrap. In the real situation when the evil action is being done, the person who does it knows that it's evil. He may be doing a lot of mental gymnastics that have confused him to the point where it becomes very difficult to recognize this fact, but it is always known at some level 
in each person who commits an act of evil, it, it, that person knows, that person definitely knows the evil that is being done. Uh, I haven't watched any of the videos coming out of Israel, but I've seen descriptions of them. I've read descriptions of them. And if those descriptions are at all accurate, then the people who did those actions knew very definitely that they were doing the wrong thing. Thing. And this goes for people on the Israeli side and so forth, so I don't want to get into any arguments about that, about the things that have happened in the past and so forth. It goes for everybody. It goes for absolutely everybody. Now, a second question for people like us who are watching this, and I exclude the people who are maybe watching this in Israel because it's a real thing for you folks because it's happening right on your soil. It might be happening a couple of miles or even closer to you, a couple of kilometers. I'm sorry, you probably wouldn't say miles in Israel. But anyway, it's, it's probably happening very close to you. But for most of the people watching this video, and certainly for me, this is something far away. As I say, I have, I have Jewish friends and I have a Jewish wing of my family. I'm not Jewish myself. A lot of people think I'm Jewish, uh, but there is a, there's part of my family because my uh, sister married a Jewish man and, and her two children, uh, at least one of them, very, very much considers himself Jewish. So there's these sort of uh, semi, I don't know if your in-laws are still in-laws once a person gets divorced, but I'm still in contact with a lot of those people, uh, even after my sister divorced her, her husband. Um, so... I have this Jewish part of my family, but even they don't reside in Israel. I know a couple of people who reside in Israel, but I haven't talked to them in years. So for most of us, the point is, it's very far away. So what do we do about things that are very far away, uh, that are upsetting? And I just happened to be looking at this book, one of my favorite books, I Am That, uh, Talks with Nisargadatta Maharaj. And I happened to be looking at a chapter which I think is probably one of the best chapters of all, and I maybe I should do a whole video about this chapter. It's called Awareness is Free, and it, this is the chapter in which you probably get the best description of Nisargadatta Maharaja's idea of what meditation means. And it turns out it sounds a lot like Shikantaza. But near the end of the chapter, it kind of switches gears. And it doesn't say this in this edition of the book, but I have a couple. I'm, I'm a geek about this book, and I have a couple other editions. In another edition of the book, they point out that this talk took place in 1971 during the uh, the most violent part of the conflict between India and what was then called East Pakistan, which is now called Bangladesh. So if you remember your history at all, you know that there was a huge war in there and it was over there, and it was probably just as bad and bloody and horrifying as anything that's going on in Israel right now. And so they started asking Nisargadatta Maharaj about this. He said, uh, this is the questioner says, Are you not at all concerned about the state of the world? Look at the horrors in East Pakistan. Do they not touch you at all? And he says, I read newspapers. I know what is transpiring, but my reaction is not like yours. You are looking for a cure, while I am concerned with prevention. As long as there are causes, there must also be results. As long as people are bent on dividing and separating, as long as they are selfish and aggressive, such things will happen. If you want peace and harmony in the world, you must have peace and harmony in your hearts and minds. Such change cannot be imposed. It must come from within. Those who abhor war must get war out of their system. Without peaceful people, how can you have peace in the world? As long as people are as they are, the world must be as it is. I am doing my part in trying to help people to know themselves as the only cause of their own misery. In that sense, I am a useful man. But what I am in myself, what my normal state is, cannot be expressed in terms of social consciousness and usefulness. I may talk about it, use metaphors or parables, but I am acutely aware that it is just not so. Not that it cannot be experienced, it is experiencing itself, but it cannot be described in terms of a mind that must separate and oppose in order to know. The world is like a sheet of paper on which something is typed. 
The reading and the meaning will vary with the reader, but the paper is the common factor, always present, rarely perceived. When the ribbon is removed, typing leaves no trace on the paper. This is how my mind is. The impressions keep on coming, but no trace is left. So it just kind of goes on from there into a different area, but I think that's interesting. When things like this happen, we are aware of them, we understand them, but there isn't a solution that exists within the places people are looking for the solution. People are looking for the solution by trying to untangle that complicated soap opera type mess that that is the history of the region whatever region we're talking about if you're watching this in the far future and uh, israel and Paki or uh, palestine are in peace then uh, then there's something else probably going on that you can relate this to and 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 trying to untangle that it, it's just impossible you have to step out of it completely and what this practice is that i teach the zazen and everything is like what nisargadatta maharaj is going for it's trying to approach the problem from a completely different area. So it doesn't offer solutions like the kind of solutions you want that, that's going to untangle the mess. You can't untangle the mess. It's like this big knot of stuff that you will never untangle. Uh, it, it only is solved by stepping out of it completely and stepping into this moment and what happens in this moment with the the situation right in front of you so that's you know that's the solution uh, i know it's probably not satisfying to anybody out there but there you go if you want to donate to me keeping making more of these confusing videos you can go to the url that you're seeing below which is hardcore zen dot info slash donate that is hardcore zen dot info slash donate there you will find links to my paypal and my patreon accounts those are the the main way i make a living and i appreciate your support but as always you don't got to support me if you don't want to all right we'll see you next time have a good time all the time i'll try to return to my uh, fun halloweeny videos next time we'll see uh, i did a song recently which some of you might have seen that was intended for a halloween type video uh, and i already put it up but i didn't want to associate it with this video because it might be seen as in poor taste so we'll get back to that next time uh, we'll see you next time have a good time all the time until then all right ziggy's not feeling well he had to go to the vet today and they gave him some medicine that made him very sleepy so now he's a kind of a drugged out little doggy but uh, i think he'll be back to normal tomorrow okay go back to sleep ziggy okay mm -hmm.